There are outer expectations, like a work deadline or a request from a friend. And then there are inner expectations, like our own desire to keep a New Year's resolution, our own desire to get back into pr practicing guitar. So depending on how you respond to expectations, you're an upholder, a questioner, an obliger, or a rebel. Upholders readily meet outer and inner expectations. They keep the work deadline, they keep the New Year's resolution without much fuss. Questioners question all expectations. They'll do it if they think it makes sense. Next, obligers. Obligers readily meet outer expectations, but they struggle to meet inner expectations. And then finally, rebels. Rebels resist all expectations, outer and inner alike. They want to do what they want to do in their own way, in their own time. So what do you do with this information? How can it help you manage yourself better, and how can it help you deal better with other people? Each of the tendencies has many mottos, and my favorite motto for Upholder is, discipline is my freedom. And there's a lot of great things about being upholders. They're, they're, they're self-reliant, they're self-starters, they're, they're very good at executing, they want to meet expectations. But, as with all the tendencies, the upsides are also the downsides. And upholders can be rigid. So you want to make sure, if you're an upholder or you're dealing with an upholder, that they're not turning into like the mindless bureaucrat of doing their own paperwork endlessly. Next, questioners. And the motto for the questioners is, if you convince me why, then I'll comply. They're always looking how to make processes better. They tend to love information. They're really great for all of us because they're the ones who are saying like, why are we doing this by Friday? Why are we doing this report? Why are we listening to you? Why are we doing this at all? But the upsides are the downsides. Questioners sometimes drain and overwhelm others with their constant questioning. So what do you do if you're a questioner or you're dealing with a questioner who's stuck in analysis paralysis? One is to use deadlines. Another is limits. You can interview five people for this, this job position, but we're not gonna interview 15 people. Or you find trusted authority. If you wanna buy a new great bicycle, you could spend the rest of your life trying to figure out what is the best bicycle. Or you could just go to a really, really great bike shop and think, people who work here really know a lot about bikes. I can be very guided by their judgment. So next, obligers. So obligers are the rock of the world. They are the type O, they are the type that pairs up the most easily with the other tendencies. Really, the frustration of being an obliger falls most on obligers themselves, which is reflected in their motto, which is, you can count on me, and I'm counting on you to count on me. What's the cure for this? If you want to meet an inner expectation, you must create systems of outer accountability around that inner expectation. You want to read more? Join a book group. Now, finally, rebels. Their motto is, you can't make me, and neither can I. It can be challenging to be working or living with somebody who every time you ask or tell them to do something is very likely to resist. So how do you help a rebel or help yourself as a rebel? So let's say you have a rebel colleague who is refusing to go to a mandatory Wednesday morning meeting. You could say to the rebel something like, you know, I don't know if you know that we have these Wednesday 10 a.m. meetings. It's like everybody who's at the meeting, we, we, we think about all the projects that are coming up in the next several weeks, and then everybody in the meeting, we take the interesting ones. And then we leave the dregs for the people who aren't at the meeting. So yeah, the meeting's at 10 a.m. on Wednesdays. Information consequences choice. It's up to you. So I really do think that this can help you show compassion for yourself, because there's nothing wrong with you. You're not lazy. You don't lack willpower. It's totally predictable that something that's easy for someone else might be challenging for you. There's plenty of ways to work around that. And it can also allow us to show more compassion to other people. Because when we understand other people, then it's, it's not a matter of one person's right and one person's wrong. It's just how do we both, or all of us, get where we want to go.